and we welcome you to Fullerton College Soccer on Football Fridays with KBPK. I am Ryan Osborne, joined by Joseph Pavlenko and Mark Pavlovich as we get set for this afternoon's matchup. Reminder that this game was slated to start at 6 p.m. How th however, things kind of moved, changed, and now all of a sudden you've got a 3 p.m. matchup between these two sides. And Mark, this is going to be a good one, an OEC head-to-head -head with both of these two teams who have been pretty equal in the last few years. Well, I think, Ryan, the big thing is this is going to be a defensive matchup when I look at these two teams out there. Really is the thing that you want to look at from a defensive point of view. Both these teams are excellent. Fullerton College will be starting from right to left, attacking from right to left. Angel Sevillano, right towards midfield, looking for Misael Gonzalez. Can't catch up to him along with Hayden Kenny as well. Ball goes all the way back, and it's going to go to Yoel. Yoel, a little drop pass now to Aldo. Aldo moves it up with Hayden Kenny. Hayden Kenny second on the team in game-winning goals. He's got 13 tries to get it up to Misael. He's going to end up getting fouled. So IVC will take it, and they will start things attacking from left to right in the all-white uniforms. And, Mark, you know, you were talking about it. You've seen a lot of Cypress so far this season. The Orange Empire Conference, plain and simple, is a very hectic, very physical type of conference. Oh, yeah, they will. They'll play a lot of tough football out on the field when you look at it. It's not one of these, it's not one of these, let's just have fun, run, and kick the ball. They will be very physical, and we'll see how many fouls we get in today's game. And it's interesting you mentioned the fouls, Mark, because both of these two teams, number one and number two in the state of California when it comes to yellow cards. Leading the CCCAA as this ball goes past the end line and will come up for a goal kick. Leading the CCCAA in yellow cards right now is Irvine Valley with 27 to their resume. And Fullerton right behind them trailing by two as the Fullerton College Hornets have 25. We'll get to the starting lineups here in just a couple of moments as both these two teams begin that process of feeling one another out. IVC again attacking from right to left, and Fullerton going from, or excuse me, IVC going from left to right, Fullerton from right to left. This goes over to Yoel, now punched over towards the middle, an opportunity for Lopez, and it goes off of his foot just a shade too far. IVC starting things off with goalkeeper Christopher Arzate, joined by Jaden Lamas. They're trying to set things up inside the box, but can't get that pass to connect. It's intercepted and taken away by Fred Bekovic. Bekovic, left-hand side, looking for a teammate, trying to find Lopez, scooped out, and Lopez is going to have a corner kick coming up. Finishing off the starting lineup for IVC, after Lamas, it's Jamie Ipen, joined by Leonard Gran Granzow. Granzow last year had a game winner against Antelope Valley that allowed them to move to the second round of the playoffs. Ivan Lopez looking for the far post, can't find someone, goes off of Aldo and it will go away. No foul call coming up as it's going to go to Jacob Edwards. Grant Miller, Jacob Edwards, Ivan Lopez, Sam Lockhart, Anthony Ocampo, and Fred Bekovic. That's the starting lineup here as Misa is going to get up to it. Here's a chance for Misa. Misa in on a little low, a chance, right footed. He's got the goal. Fullerton College just that quickly. The counterattack for the Hornets, and it's 1-0 Fullerton College. Well, Ryan, that counterattack happens because you get a great lead pass, and Miso stays on side and drops the ball in front of him, catches up with it. Then it's one-on-one -on -one play, and at that stage of the game, he leads the OEC in scoring. You knew he was going to put it in the bread basket. So Miso Gonzalez gets... The Hornets on the board as we get back underway. Joseph Pavlenko over to my left-hand side watching along alongside Mark Pavlovich and Ryan Osborne here on Football Fridays. It's an earlier start here for both the Hornets and the Lasers. Starting lineup for Fullerton. Well, just a few moments ago, you heard from Misael Gonzalez who gets a goal in the first five minutes of play for the fourth time this season. That's actually going to go officially as the third minute to make it one to nothing, Fullerton. Ball goes past the end line. Ball. 
And it will be picked up and kicked away by Ryan Marino Rojas. Assist. Beard away. Seviano looking for a teammate. He's got Giles. Giles on that right side. He's one of those trusted guys, Mark. You always want to have an anchor on your back line that pushes the pace into transition. When you look at the Hornets, that right side for Fullerton, Seviano and Giles is one of the best in the state. Yeah, and, and really what you're looking for here, too, is... Is this an offensive team, which I look at Fullerton as an offensive team, but look at the lineups of what they do, Ryan. They've got four on top. You look at the defensive set for them, three back deep defensively. They are an attacking team, to say the least. Fullerton one, Irvine Valley zero. We were talking about the Fullerton lineup, Evan Yoel, Aldo Ramirez, as this is going to be chased by Lopez and finally taken away by Marquez. Angel Sevillano with Brian Aragon, Misael Gonzalez, Cesar Marquez with Neil Sanchez who enters the lineup. Diego Duenas is back in as well. And they're joined by Nathan Giles and goalkeeper Ryan Marino Rojas. We've seen Ryan Marino Rojas three times in the last three matches. He got the start against Cuyamaca here last Friday night. And for Fullerton, he actually split 45 and 45 in their last matchup against OEC. Here's a chance for Kenny. Kenny on the left-hand side. Kenny moves it with his right foot, gets that one scooped out of play by Jaden Lamas, and a corner kick is coming up over to our left-hand side. Now, when you take a look at the goalkeeping for both of these two sides, you start things off with the Irvine Valley side of things as Christopher Arzate, three games played so far this season, and he has... Been pretty decent for them. Three goals against, a two goals against average so far to this point. Inside the box, everyone moving around. Getting word from the official, just trying to see what exactly they're going to encounter in terms of lining up near the penalty marker. Everyone on the inside, now booted up. It's going to go towards the middle, deflects away, trying to get over to it will be Sanchez. Sanchez pushes it to the right side touchline. Popped into the air. Opportunity back post. Kenny Misa, goal! And I guess that's what you get, Ryan. You've got uh, Fullerton, if we're looking at national rankings, I think number five. IVC 15 on the national rankings. And you have the go-to guy for Fullerton College, Misael Gonzalez, once again, finding the back of the net. My question for this game is, we were here last Friday, Brian. We almost saw Fullerton College make it out with a clean sheet. Do you think they have that in mind, or do you think they just care about the W? I think that they're trying to make a statement here in conference. Uh, when you take a look at how well they've been able to attack and especially counter here in the early going, I think that clean sheet is exactly what they're going to be looking for. And, of course, if you talk to coaching staffs all across the nation, you say, hey, is a clean sheet what you're looking for? You're going to get the cliche answer. Yes, of course, each and every one of those guys is going to be looking for that shutout. But Fullerton has been particularly good in the last two seasons in getting clean sheets as a result in conference play. In fact, Fullerton has three clean sheets so far this season. They've already got one against Orange Coast with that 4-0 win that they had on Tuesday afternoon. So to answer your question and go long story short, yes, I believe that's exactly what they're going for here. You get on the attack early and then you can kind of sit back a little bit more. I disagree. I disagree. I, I think Fullerton is going to set the prowess as being a physical offensive team and get in front four and five. And if they don't have a clean sheet at the end of the day with them shutting down their opponents and having them in their back pocket, I don't think that's going to be a piece. I mean, Ryan, you look at it right now. You lead the OHC in points. You had 22 coming in. Now you get two more goals. You add on six on that. Now you've got 28 points coming in. It's an offensive squad is what Fullerton is. They will take the defense when it's there, but this has been an offensive squad. I think the OG just wants to be on the air with us and be a little contrarian. 
setting things up. Free kick goes in on goal, and it's going to be picked up, scooped away, and kicked away by Arzate. And you know what? I think I agree with you, Joe. <laughs> Just a little contrarian, but okay. that's okay. That's what makes KBPK so special. This goes up to Lopez. Lopez is going to scoop it onto his left foot. He's looking for a teammate to continue a run with him. He's going to cross Giles, now leaves it towards the middle, goes off the head of Grant Miller, and Grant Miller is going to box out Aldo Ramirez. Miller looking to go to his right foot, but can't get clean possession. Finds a teammate, though, and it's going to go to Anthony Ocampo. Ocampo looking for someone. Now Bekovic tries to find service in the middle and can't get there. Jamie Eipen out of Waldorf, looking for someone, poked away from him, and a lot of contact there as Granzau is able to take over. Granzau out of Germany, went to Johannes Brahms in Germany. And that's where he trained as this is going to go towards the middle of the park and at the midfield stripe, it, a, a foul is going to be called, and that goes against... Fullerton and specifically will go against Brian Aragon. Aragon in addition to Neil Sanchez and Diego Duenas starting in the middle for Fullerton and a set piece coming up. And just so the fans know I'm not contrarian I'm actually <laughs> Serbian so uh, you know. Well that's fine much like World College Radio Day here at KBPK all voices are welcome. Ah. I'll remember that next week. Far side of the pitch. Irvine trying to set something up, but Fullerton will take over with Misa. Misa trying to find a teammate. He gets that kind of checked away from behind, if you will. And at the opposite side, we'll call it the 40-yard line, Mark. He ends up finding a set piece for Fullerton College. Is that a foul? I saw him place it at the 43. <laughs> you know what? Here's the big question for Ryan Osborne. Ryan? Yes, sir. Can you tell me why they call it the pitch? I cannot. Off the top of my head, no. Oh. Well, I'll have to tell that story along the way here. So. Well, I was going to say, that is why we have the OG here on the air. It, the it, history lessons. Yeah. I mean, it is called the pitch, which it is a regulation soccer field. That's why they call it a pitch, not a field. And since back in the old days, soccer, when it competed against cricket, wanted to have their own field. Pitch comes from cricket. And that's what the field was called for cricket. It was called the pitch. Therefore, soccer, when they had their own fields dedicated strictly to soccer, it was called the soccer pitch. And that's why it's called a pitch not a field. And that was taken from cricket and rolled over to soccer. Everyone moving around on the inside. That ball's going to in-swing too far. And it goes over towards the far side of the park where it will find the awaiting foot of Cesar Marquez. Marquez trying to keep it alive, pokes it out. And it will be IVC who takes over. That's the third corner of this matchup for Fullerton. And Mark, Joe, you look at the Fullerton College Hornets to this point. Counterattack twice has worked for them. In addition to just getting the ball up, floating it up, and saying, hey, our top three need to go and get the ball, and that's how we're going to create offense here. Marquez, left-hand side, looking for Kenny. Has it go off the foot of Kenny, pops up. It will go to the back line, far side to Ipen. Ipen looking for someone, and he turns it over for a goal. Fullerton College makes it 3-0 inside of 15 minutes of play. And, Ryan, this is where I'm going to go back to what we talked about with a clean sheet and everything. If you're that aggressive offensively, Irvine Valley is now going to have to change their setup because they're sitting back with three back defensively. That has not worked in this game. And the midfielders are not getting back quick enough to help the defensemen. Let's see if they change their setup as this game goes on. Well, that's something Ryan and I have talked about before in us seeing this Fullerton College squad last year and the games that we have seen this year, Mark. It's Fullerton College's ability to almost on a dime flip the dynamic on the field, take 
in this case, IVC pressing, trying to get into Fullerton College's half or, or third of the field, if you will, and then on a dime, just reverse that momentum and send it back at them. And a lot of the times, Fullerton College seems to be catching them kind of flat-footed because I don't think that back line expects that turn to come and to come as quick as it does. Yeah, and it's, it's a very quick high pressure. That one just goes wide for IVC, and they try and create their own pressure. But you mentioned that that top line for Fullerton, we've seen it in the past where they have the opportunity to go out and press an opponent's back line like you're talking about, right? But this is a whole different game with these three. Hayden Kenny, Misael Gonzalez, and then whoever they decide to throw on that right-hand side, they're able to plug in different guys, and it still keeps the offense rolling. It's spectacular to watch this Hornet squad and how well they're able to control their own back line and the pace of play, and then just say, hey, you know what? We've got three guys who are good enough to toss it up the field and say, hey, go and get the ball and create offense for us. Just a few moments ago, Neil Sanchez with his first collegiate goal. That was in the 14th minute of play. It is 3-0 Fullerton College with the lead. And the Hornets very quickly trying to go on the attack again. Hayden Kenny sees this one taken over by Jaden Lamas. Lamas, right-hand side, looking for someone. Liner, heavy contact. He gets fouled, and that will end up going against Hayden Kenny. A few minutes ago, we mentioned Hayden Kenny. Game-winning goal against Cuyamaca. So far, he has started in six matches, has played in all ten for the Hornets. Had a game-winner against Mountain View in his high school days to help Huntington Beach win their first game of the season last year. Was a prolific scorer with the Huntington Beach Oilers. See the toss in there. Kenny on the chase. Now to the right-hand side. It will end up onto the foot of Ivan Lopez. Lopez looking for someone, can't find it. It will stay with the Lasers. Up to it is Lamas. He has Hagigat to his right. Lamas retakes. And now it will be scooped over towards that left-hand side with Ivan. Freshman out of Waldorf. Right-footed, little back spinner, tries to poke it over top of Seviano. Seviano is there for the Hornets. Seviano had an excellent high school career and also has carved out a brilliant career with the Hornets to this point. Starter in each matchup last year. That counted for Fullerton College in addition to that playoff run for the Hornets as well. And he's one of those guys that Fullerton... And Coach Greg Avilas heavily trusts to be able to not only set the pace of play, but continue that physicality and also space out everyone in midfield. He is one of two captains that Fullerton College has on their roster this season, the other being Misao Gonzalez. Here's a takeaway. Right-hand side of the park. It gets picked up by Cesar Marquez. Marquez on the inswing, down the middle, looking for Misa. Misa, bicycle, and it goes just wide. Goal kick coming up, and he tried to... Do everything in his power there, Mark and Joe, to get that one over top of his shoulder, but just a shade off balance on the miss hit. And again, we're seeing foot speed on this field, and, and that's the thing where Irvine Valley is not matching up well, is the foot speed for this entire soccer team from Fullerton. Marquez, left-hand side, wants Kenny. Kenny looking for the foul inside the box, isn't going to end up getting the call. Now mid-park, it goes to Yoel. Yoel on the intercept. He pokes it out. He had a goal against Cuyamaca as well as Fullerton College, and the offense for the Hornets continues to click. They had five goals against Cuyamaca. They had four against Orange Coast, and now three here in the first 15 minutes of play. And they continue to kind of roll through all of their opponents in recent memory. They're on a five-match winning streak trying to make it six here. Poked away. Here's Hayden Kenny. Kenny still able to stay in front. He ends up getting fouled. And that will be sent away by Hagigat. And when you look at when you look at this fuller to team, I mean Ryan, look look what their mindset is. Your three defensemen are eight to nine yards over midfield right now. 
your goalie is out 20 yards outside the box right now. This is not a defensive-minded team on the field if you're Fullerton. You can say that, Mark, but also Fullerton's back line, very confident with the ball in their third of the field, half of the field. No, I'm going to stick with third. They, they, mm -hmm. they are more comfortable than I would be um, with a ball, a threat that deep into my side of the field. Well, yeah, and I, Joe, I agree with you. I think they get back extremely fast. They are smart soccer players. In this game of football, they know what they're doing. Off the right foot, out of play, past the touchline. And as much as we may talk about Fuller to College football that gets played on Saturday as we get substitutions <laughs> going on, this football team is brilliant. Ryan, I'll let you get those substitutions. Alexis Tamayo comes in. He will replace Neil Sanchez, who had the goal earlier. And also joining the 11 will be Omar Ruiz. And he will get the opportunity to get some minutes here out of Tustin. Here's Kenny. Spikes high. Very dangerous play for both sides, but Fullerton comes away with it. Misa, Misa on the right-hand turn, finds someone, he's got Ruiz, and that ball just clangs around inside the box. And Mark, you look at Fullerton, it's just three passes, and it's one touch, one touch, one touch, and they find themselves in scoring range. Yeah, and Ryan, I think that's a great call. One touch, you're absolutely right. It is a quick pass, and you see the reaction time for Irvine Valley just being a little slow. To the right, they'll find Jacob Edwards. Edwards will find a foul, and he will see a set piece coming up here for IVC. And I like Joe's response. Joe, you watch those four defensemen get back deep for Fullerton so quickly before this kick is even happening. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the strengths of this Fullerton College team is they, they're able to read what's going on in the field, adapt, and then counterattack. And that's what makes them so dangerous. And again, I'm going to drive this point into the ground. That's what lets them kind of turn the momentum of the game on a dime. Ruiz on the chase far side. Lockhart tried to set things up for Ivan Lopez a few moments ago. But it gets intercepted by the Hornets, this time with Yoel. Yoel finds Misa. Misa just inside the midfield line, and he's going to take off down the left-hand side. He's in a foot race, one-on-one -on -one against Jaden Lamas. Lamas trying to stay positional, finds that left side with Aldo. Aldo pokes it away, gets it to a teammate, headed up into the air, and that is going to go into the sky and past everyone. An opportunity was there for Alexis Tamayo, but Tamayo sees that one too high up as that service on the inside from Aldo. He was just trying to keep it alive, and it just goes up top. Hey, I've got to ask both of you, because you've been out here a lot. Is this a left-footed team, a right-footed team? They love the middle of the field. Do, do they have a side they lean towards when you, they attack? For the most part, what we've seen is this left-hand side, they like to create a lot of opportunity for offense on the left-hand side. But for the most part, Mark, we haven't necessarily seen them lean too much to one side or the other because what we've seen from them a lot is just sending the ball up and having their guys chase after it and win one-on-one -on -one races. So instead of what you're used to, Mark, where you've got teams who say, okay, we're, we like the right side so we can serve towards the middle, or we like to push towards the left side so we can back things up into the box, Fullerton hasn't really shown that so far. It's more just been a, let's get the ball out. We have incredible athletes on the outside who can catch up to it. Yeah, it's kind of like what you said, Mark. This is an offensive team, and with going with that, they like to score. So do they like the left, right, center of the field? Are they left-footed, right-footed? The answer to that is yes. Whatever <laughs> finds the back of the net, yes. Well, I do find it interesting like a lot of teams when they attack will stay in the wings. They'll stay the outside and bring the ball back into the middle uh, to both of you. Today, Fullerton has gone down the middle 
with a great deal of their attack instead of on the outside swinging it back into the middle. Well, I mean, that's generally what you want to do, right? You're playing soccer. You want to bring it down on the wings. You're probably going to have a little bit more room there. It's going to be less less, bit, less of a congested highway, as it were, right? So you're going to take it to the wings. The goal is to get it back to the center of the field. Uh, almost if you want to look at the field top down, Mark, you take like a 90-degree line and take it out of both sides of the goal post, and that kind of makes a little cone. And I guess we could call that the cone of danger. And that's where you absolutely don't want the ball. Um, if you're a defender or a goalie, you do not want it in that territory because that's right in front of your goal. That's going to give them the most scoring opportunities. And that's where, as a goalie or as a defender, your team is in the most danger. Ball up in towards the box for IVC. A chance there. That goes off the foot of Christopher Camarena, who just checked in a few moments ago. And it will end up going into the awaiting arms of Ryan Marino Rojas. New subs in Lucas Stark in addition to Christopher Camarena, who had the shot a few moments ago, and Logan Coffin. To the back line, it will fly. See that middle of the park frame for the Buzzy logo. Joe and I were talking about it a lot last week, Mark, with the Buzzy logo here at Fullerton. Brand new surface at Hal Sherbeck Field, allowing for these student athletes to get a brand new feel for Fullerton College Soccer. Long time playing over our right shoulder at the soccer field, but now everything changes here as Ruiz will clear out, goes towards Min. Now we'll find someone looking for Lopez. It's gonna go towards that right side where diving after it will be Ryan Marino Rojas, and he will take over and take possession. Can I vote for a red ball next game? <laughs> Um, yes, I will also cast that vote with you. See, I would prefer more neon, a lot more visibility. Oh, I'll, I'll take anything that brightens this up so I know with that little white dot going around there, I know which one it is. It's not spittle for my lips. <laughs> I'll just wait till they bring out the gray ball, Mark. You'll have a lot of fun. Fullerton asking for a card. They don't get one from the official. Hayden Kenny hits the deck as he... Had a collision there with Jacob Edwards. Edwards with Stark and Camarena. Joined by Grant Miller, top four for IVC. Ryan Osborne, Joseph, I got to say, soccer is a physical game. And when players, no matter what the gender is, lay on the turf, I just want to say, why do you make this look like it's a, it's a death wave? You got knocked down. Get up. So do you want the technical answer or do you want the boring answer? Or, I, I mean, I guess the, the silly answer, the answer that everybody goes to. Omar Ruiz sends this one off the post on that right-hand side. We're going to get a corner kick. They say it was deflected out. So chalk that up as a save. As just a few moments ago diving out, there was Christopher Arzate and Arzate gets his first save of this match. But Joe, we'll, we'll let you continue on with uh, your explanation on technicalities. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's part of the strategy of the game, Mark. Um, you know, it, it's almost like in basketball where you're trying to either draw a foul, personal, technical, what have you, right? Or you're trying to... Uh, get one to stop a play that could have happened. You'd rather take the foul in that situation than get the points put on the board, right? You'd rather have somebody have to try to make shots and know that they've got a empty goal or an empty net or rim or basket or what have you. So you kind of can kind of draw that through line of similar logic between soccer and basketball there almost. Um, it could also give your guys a... Uh, Time to catch their breath if they're maybe huffing and puffing a little bit after some intense action. So maybe, you know, you stay down there a couple, you know, five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Maybe you need to catch your breath. So you go, <laughs> wow, I just found the ground. Unfortunate. Maybe I can draw a foul. Maybe that doesn't come across your mind. Maybe it does. And then the other thing across your mind is, wow, it's uh, cozy up here and I don't have to run. <laughs> few moments ago, Devin Viegas, Ruben Rivera, and Thomas Gomez all came in for Fullerton College. Go, 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 go. 
Take away there by Yoel. Yoel brings it on the right-hand side. He'll find someone directly in front of him. Opportunity for Jacob Edwards goes off his shoulder. And it will actually be a throw-in coming up for Fullerton College. I was so I was so in tune with listening to Joe, and he said, take a nap. I just leaned to my camera and almost went to sleep. <laughs> All right, Mark, we got about, say, 15 minutes left in play, not including stoppage time. So you make it that long, we'll go get you a coffee. There we go. There we go. Here's Lopez. Lopez with a shot that ends up just going up over top of the goal, and it will end up being a goal kick. Good for three. <laughs> oh, oh. Wrong, wrong sport. I'm sorry. So, again, that's something Ryan and I were talking about the last time we were out here when they were playing Kuyamaka. That's a shot you take. You hope it catches the goalie flat-footed. You hope it maybe catches the goalie flat-footed. But if nothing else, you're knocking on the door, right? You're letting them know, hey, I'm here. I'm waiting. You know, keep them on their toes. Because if you don't take those kinds of shots, they're going to expect you to not, and you're not being a danger on that side of the field. To both of you, one of the things I can say in doing as much soccer as I've done this year for sports at USA.net, Ryan, Joe, both of you give me this answer. I don't see the expert corner kickers that I've seen in the past on the soccer field. Have I just missed it because they're all here at Fullerton? <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, it's It's... Corner kicks, like Ryan said, it, it's it's set pieces, right? And that's something, if we're going to make analogies to other sports, right? Um, set pieces in soccer would be like special teams in uh, egg ball. I mean, American football. <laughs> egg ball. Yeah, it looks like an egg. Wow. You know, you want to make... Football seem more intimidating. I think you call it gridiron. You leave football to where football started. Game that actually takes place with the ball, you know, interacting with people's feet. You call American football gridiron. It's a lot more intimidating. And then we don't have confusion. I'm just here, man. <laughs> <laughs> this ball goes all out of play at far side. That's the touch line, and it's going to be a Fullerton throw in from that far side. But it, it's interesting you mentioned that, Joe, because I was actually just looking this up. You know, football season, obviously, very well in swing as long as, as well as Fullerton College football at the same time. And it's interesting just how the terms ended up being created as Fullerton will see a foul against Alexis Tamayo just inside the box and a free kick coming up for IVC. But you look at the history between both of these two sports. You look at a, a thing like American football. I'm sure that Mark can tell you more than I, but the origins of football, it was a lot more oriented with the ball meeting your foot, being interacted a lot more with the legs as well, and you didn't have forward passes to go with. So you see those athletes and them calling it football in that context, it's understandable. But now you look at modern day and you say, okay, well, things don't quite fit that same narrative anymore as that ball gets scooped out and it's going to bring on a substitution far side of the park for IVC. But you see how things are created versus what they evolve into and the sport just changes. Well, I, I, I think when we talk about sports changing, this sport has changed in the way of attitudes on the collegiate level. Here's Ivan Lopez. Lopez calling for a penalty. He's got it. IVC with an excellent chance to get themselves on the board here as there will be a penalty kick coming up for Ivan Lopez one of the leaders in scoring in the Orange Empire Conference. He is currently tied for third. He's got four goals, six assists, and he has 14 points with a chance to make it 15 and bring Irvine Valley within two goals. So you see the foul that takes place just a few moments ago, and here you have the penalty taker, Ivan Lopez, on your left-hand side. Right-hand side of your screen is Ryan Marino Rojas. Marino Rojas looking for an opportunity to 
keep Fullerton College up 3-0. Lopez, left-footed, looking for the signal. He hears the whistle. He's going to approach, puts it right side. It's a goal. And IVC is back in it. It's now 3-1 as Fullerton College gives up a penalty kick. And Ivan Lopez, the trusted scorer for Irvine Valley, gets the lasers on the board. You know, can I say something here, too, which I, I, I'm going to say it in behalf of the goalie. Ryan, you were talking about a clean sheet. I think it's very unfair when it's a penalty kick. The goalie pays the brunt of that because it's one-on-one, -on -one, even though it wasn't the goalie that created the problem. No, you're right, Mark. And last Friday, Fullerton up five, no, four to, four to, four nil. Yes, four nil. And that's how they get scored on. Again, it's kind of like in basketball. You draw that technical foul because foul someone's on a breakaway. You're hoping they don't make the free throw, in this case, a penalty kick. Um, and then, you know, you just put your keeper in a unfortunate one-on-one -on -one situation where, like you said, it is one person and a lot of net, and you have to hope that they can read that shot and what that player is doing. Lasers back on the attack, starting to sense something here. Get an opportunity once more. That shot left-hand side, it goes wide. Just a few moments ago, Mark and Joe, they had an excellent chance on that right side with Jamie Eipen. He actually fielded a ball that looked like it was going to go well far into the corner, gets it off his chest, and is able to take a shot that ends up getting blocked by the Fullerton back line. As Nathan Giles looks like he's going to uh, take a seat in just a couple of moments, but you see how Fullerton gives up a goal, and all of a sudden there's starting to be a run here by the Lasers. Well, yeah, I, I mean, confidence, and the goal brings confidence to the off offensive side. You realize when you're taking on two of the top goalies, both on this Fullerton team, uh, you break the eggshell op egg open and the yolks all over the plate. It's time to go get them. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Mark. Once once you start swinging the momentum in your favor, the wrong thing to do almost 100% of the time is to let off the gas. I mean, you guys were drawing comparisons just a little bit ago to gridiron. You start seeing that prevent defense show up, and all of a sudden it takes you out of your rhythm, takes you out of what you were having successes with, and now... IVC says, hey, you know what? We see that prevent defense. We're going to start attacking it as this one goes down the right side of the park. An opportunity for Camarena. Camarena tries to bring it on the inside, and that goes off of Seviano, and it will go out of play. So a corner kick coming up from the right side of the park, and it looks like stepping up to it will be Lopez. And Fullerton College, if you are a Hornet fan, now having to be really careful here because that ball in the right side of the park with the left-footed Lopez Great chance for a goal. Towards the middle, it will fly. It gets poked up into the air by Seviano, and it will be a throw-in now for IVC. I'd call that a little bit more of a dink up into the air. You know what? I'll, I'll be up there for a while. I, I, I just, uh, again, I'm going to talk about the corner kicks, guys. I think that's the one thing lacking in the game of soccer in this level. Um, I think it's one of the more tricky things, Mark. And again, equating it to other sports and football like special teams. I think a lot of people think of special teams as guaranteed points and maybe kind of neglect some of the finer points that on that unit you should maybe do. And uh, same thing could be said for soccer teams at times. You know, you have a set piece, you have a chance to score, you have a chance to turn an attack in your favor. And maybe you just don't practice those set pieces or that situation enough because you're worrying about other aspects of the game and that's kind of the icing on the top of the cake, right? You don't always get to that because sometimes you're a little too full. Offside for Irvine Valley College as <laughs> the Hornets will take over once again. If you are unfamiliar with KBPK, what you will notice is that at one point in every broadcast, there is a food reference brought up. 
by one of us. It gives us quite joy to <laughs> be able to compare our favorite athletic events to different food references, as this will be a foul right at midfield, and it looks like it will be taken over by IVC. IVC attacking from your left to your right, as Fullerton going from right to left, coming up on five minutes to play until the half. Offside by the Hornets, and it will be brought up by Christopher Arzate. Arzate, right footer, going towards the top of the Hornet box. Clangs around for a second, goes over to Saviano, who's going to see Isaiah Ponce give chase. And finally taken over and brought up by Edwards. Edwards says, let's try and play this more towards the back line. Edwards, left-hand side, sees that one taken away. Fullerton trying to move up the park. They've got Viegas. Viegas gives that one right back, and it will be chased down to the right side to Lucas Stark. Lucas Stark now to Ivan Lopez. Lopez with a goal in this one. He's got five goals, six assists. Top three in the conference in terms of scoring, right behind Misael Gonzalez. Down towards the middle, it goes to Lopez. Lopez on the one, two, and he tries to get one on the inside of the box. But the frame is protected by Ryan Marina Rojas, and it will be brought up by the Fullerton keeper. Foul there, Marquez trying to chase after it. Irvine Valley getting one back in the 35th minute. Misao Gonzalez with goals in the third and eighth minute of play to give Fullerton a 2-0 lead. After that, he was followed up by Neil Sanchez with his first collegiate goal in the 14th. And Fullerton not only led for most of this matchup and have led for most of this matchup, but they had controlled most of the pace of play as well. Then all of a sudden, IVC says, all right, let's try and get some possession near the box, as they do here. Lopez sees that one go too far in front. And they got a foul inside the box. It brought up a, a PK in the 35th, and Lopez was able to bury it. Lopez now at 16 points. Misael Gonzalez adding four points to his resume. As he had nine goals and four assists entering this matchup for 22 now he's got 26 points to his credit. Right side, Hornets trying to set things up with Gael Rosas, who had a goal in the last matchup against OEC, or excuse me, OCC. And it would go off his right foot, past the touchline, and out. 225 left in regulation for the first half before stoppage time. Lopez. Up ahead, has a teammate looking for Camarena. Camarena drops it down to his right foot. Camarena looking for a shot that gets blocked. Still in possession by the Lasers and finally gets poked over to Aldo Ramirez. Ramirez finds Rosas. Rosas, right side of the park. He's looking for someone. Can't get it to him quite successfully. Finally slid away and Fullerton has a chance. They've got a break here with Devin Viegas. Viegas now finds Gomez. Thomas Gomez sees that one left behind, and it's going to go right past the awaiting foot of Eicherman, who is trying to continue a run on the right side, and the ball just isn't there for him. Well, guys, you've seen the lasers step up defensively now, and you see those open players, especially the forwards, for the Hornets being covered and being shadowed out there. So the lasers have picked up the defense. They're still with three back defensively but you watch the midfielders get back much quicker now and the defense is picked up for Irvine Valley a whole host of substitutions coming in for Fullerton College you see him right here on your screen Hayden Kenny is going to rejoin along with him will be Kyle Sherman in addition to Misael Gonzalez as well and they're joined by Hugo Galeana so like you said Ryan about two minutes left in regulation time right you do some subs right now. Are you just trying to get fresh legs on the field, maybe find the back of the net and put some extra pressure on before the half? I think that's exactly what you're looking for here as Lopez is going to chase after this. Slid over towards the middle of the park. It'll find Kenny. Kenny now for Aldo. Aldo into the air says, hey, Misa, go try and catch up to this one. A little bit of some... 
backspin on this as Misa gets away from two. Now he gets away from three. It goes off of him. Will it go out? No. It will be saved from going past the end line for a corner kick. And IVC will now retake over. Middle of the park. And going back to what you were saying, Joe, I think you're going to try and get them some rhythm. You're also going to try and get them a couple more minutes before you go into half. Because you got to realize when they go into the half, you're coming out of the half with the opportunity to have the ball and move the ball forward. You just want them to get themselves rewarmed up right before you go into the end of the, for the, of the 45. Right side of the park, this ball will end up in the corner with Ivan Lopez. Everyone repositioning themselves inside the box. Ball up. In play still for IVC. Finally cleared away by Sherman. Sherman can't keep it. Now towards the middle goes to Camarena, who's offside if he touches, and it will end up being called. I think another thing that the IVC players were able to do, Mark said earlier in the game, Fullerton College was beating them at the foot race. And like you said, Ryan, the midfielders are coming back quicker. They're not getting caught flat-footed not running back on their heels, trying to play catch up. And I think you have the back line of IVC more aware that it could be a foot race and trying to do better coverage than maybe they were, or not better coverage, but more strategic coverage than they were in the early minutes of this game. Yeah, and you look at how Fullerton was able to kind of dominate the early going. They kept the pace of play. They were able to run as much as they wanted to and Fullerton College really dominated that early side of this one. And now they're going to take it into the half with a lead. So the end of the first 45, it's Fullerton College 3, IVC 1. You are watching Football Fridays here on KBPK. Ryan Osborne joined by Mark Pavlovich and Joseph Pavlenko as we get set for the half here in just a couple of moments. Not only are we going to have a halftime here where we kind of talk about what we can expect in the second half and what we can expect from both of these two teams. But what you're going to find here, Mark and Joe, is you're going to find that we're going to promo a lot of what we have going on coming up in the next few days, next few weeks going on here at not only KBPK, but also the Hornet, as we're going to be joined in just a couple of moments here at the half by Jake Rhodes, who's over to my left. Mark, Jake over here is one of the, well, we'll call you one of the big honchos over at the Hornet. Go ahead and give us your title and what some of your responsibilities are. Yes, I'm um, the editor-in-chief of the Hornet uh, newspaper for the semester. So um, I'm here helping out our sports section. We need some help covering some games today. So I'm here covering some great soccer action we've got out here. And I'm also in charge of publishing everything and uh, making sure that we are the voice of the student body here at Fullerton College. You mentioned the voice of the student body. One of the things that's always interesting to me is just how the Hornet goes out. You get your stories. What are some of the resources that you guys are able to go and say, okay, we just found out about this story. Now we're going to go take a look at it. Yeah, we, uh, we're really lucky that our, uh, our, our advisor, Jessica Langlois, uh, has a, her ear to the ground and helps us kind of get a head start on what to look at. Um, of course, we also use the website um, for the, the calendar and different things of that nature. Um, and then, like I said, everyone, for the most part, we are pretty fortunate that even our administration and someone like President Olivo um, has been really open to us and uh, willing to do interviews for us and letting us really work on being a journalist. And that's kind of what we've been fortunate at, especially this semester in particular. You personally, before, of course, becoming editor-in-chief, had the opportunity to go and do your own reporting before becoming editor-in-chief. Right. What were some of the favorite stories that you've chased down so far? Oh, man. Um, the most detailed story I think I've ch uh, chased down was uh, to do a softball last season and some some things they're figuring out over there, Title IX related wise. Um, but for, like, as the sports fan and love of sports as a sports editor last semester, definitely going to Lemoore to cover the men's basketball team win, a state title, getting the full press coverage that they let us do there at the school, at the college. Um, Coach Perry letting us have the access was really, really cool. That felt like, okay, maybe I'm on a beat type of reporting, you know. 
you mentioned that going up there, you see Perry's team, obviously. You know, myself, I've been able to cover them as part of KBPK and from that video aspect of it. But when you're a journalist for the Hornet, yes, you know, you see the video aspect. Obviously, they had video. We've covered their practices and also been to their media days and stuff. But when you're doing the written story, you can kind of capture different things that a lot of people don't realize. What is one thing that you've noticed that you've been able to capture on the written side of things that if people really aren't paying attention, they don't see? It's the humanity side of, of the game. You're watching the game on video and you're seeing the dunk, the three, the steal and the, and the breakaway. But it's when you're talking to the player, or talking to the person or the coach, and you see the animation, the, uh, the excitement, the love for the game and their team. And you portray that in your writing. You're able to be a little bit creative in that sense of, yes, we need to know who scored the most points. We need to score who won, who, won, who lost. But at the end of the day, you also want to make these guys look like they're human like because they are. And you want to get that aspect of them, uh, you know, having a great quote, having a great one-liner, and you want to put that in your story. So you get the aspect of, like, treating these guys like, you know, they're students just like us, and they get have emotions just like we do, and you put that on paper. And it's, uh, it's a fun part of being a journalist is really getting to be creative. Speaking to your own journalism background, was journalism and also writing always part of that future that you wanted to get into? It was always a strength, but I didn't know if it would be a future until I really got involved my first semester as a writer um, in fall of 2022 when Professor Langlois kind of recruited me out of her Journalism 101 class to come help because they needed help. Um, and then seeing the success and seeing the uh, opportunities that it presented really opened my eyes that this is something I can do. I think I'd be pretty good at it. Um, so we're really supported by her and by our staff. When you look at how you've been able to affect your time here at the Hornet, now Editor-in-Chief, brand new responsibilities that come with that, what type of feelings did you get when you are officially named Editor-in-Chief of one of the publications that is one of the oldest in terms of a college paper in the state of California, if not the nation. Right. It was just humbling, a little emotional, to be honest with you, just knowing the history, um, knowing that the path that's laid before me to uh, lead this program into another 100 years. We're celebrating our centennial in a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, this is just a real honor and a treat and a privilege and, and a responsibility that I take very seriously in making sure that we're st staying up to top standards and um, doing the best we can to make the past writers of the Hornet and the Torch proud. And hopefully we can lead and show the future uh, writers for the Hornet what it's supposed to look like. As editor-in-chief, you were mentioning a few moments ago, sports fan, just like myself. Mm -hmm. You and I have talked sports a lot in the past. Mm -hmm. But when you look at how Fullerton and the Hornet mm -hmm. kind of present themselves, as editor-in-chief, you can't just bring the sports aspect. Right. We know that. How are you able to look at every single sign of the aspect that the Hornet brings in, whether it be fashion, whether it be news, breaking stories? How do you, well, plain and simple, how do you manage all those different interests? It's, uh, you know, the, the balance is really key. Um, obviously, that was the first challenge that we kind of discussed as taking over as EIC was, you know, my background was all sports. So how am I going to be able to incorporate arts and culture, news, opinion, breaking news. And what I've done is, first of all, leaned on my team the most, um, help them, have them help me figure out what the best route is on certain stories and things of that nature. And I also want to um, make sure that we're not just a one-trick pony either. We want to be balanced. So I use that motivation to look for different types of stories, different ways to bring profiles and be creative of the people on our campus because we're, we're a great sports campus. I know we have a lot of great teams. Um, we also have some really great people, and I think we can bring them out, bring out their uh, their personality and bring them to the forefront so they can be seen on the Hornet. You mentioned that just a few moments ago, the personalities. Who have been some of the favorite personalities that you've met so far? Well, a lot of it's sports-related. That's who I know the best. And like I said, Perry Webster has been great. Um, Coach Mendoza over at softball has been amazing as well. She just gives us a lot of access, and she really talks to us as just like we're regular students, not just someone who's covering a beat. Um, and then, like I said, Dr. Olivo has been amazing as well. Um, and those are probably the, the three most I've interacted with the most personally. Um, I was um, I'm getting to know some more of the administrative side of things. And actually, I have not ran to someone that's been disrespectful or rude. Everyone knows that we're students. 
sometimes recovering stuff that's tough, but at the end of the day, they know we're trying to learn and perfect our craft. So I haven't been really running into any, uh, any problems so far. As everyone who's watching online can see, stay up to date with all things KBPK. You see all the different social medias for KBPK, but we want to switch it over to the Hornet side of things. If people are interested in finding out about the Hornet, not just the written side of things, but maybe social media or a website, where can they go and find you? Well, all of our stories and a lot of our content at fchornetmedia.com. You can find the links there for our social medias as well. On Instagram and Twitter, it's all the same, at FC Hornet. Um, every time a story is published, we post there so you know that it's up. Um, and then we also do, um, as I'm covering this game, I'm doing live updates on our Instagram story. So um, we do all kinds of different content. We, do, we did, had somebody covering Hollywood Horror Nights last night. Um, that story will be up in a couple of days, and there's some Instagram uh, uh, story posts on that as well. So you can find us there at mainly FC Hornet, dot, FC Hornet as our handle, <coughs> fchornetmedia.com for our stories. Just a few moments ago, you mentioned someone going out to an amusement park, getting the opportunity <laughs> to cover that. What has been some of the most fun stories you've seen, not just whether it be yourself but also your staff as well, that you go, man, we get to go and cover that? That's awesome. As the basketball story was mentioned before, Hollywood Horror Nights and Austin Berry Farm always treat us well, and that's like how so cool is that they get press coverage, they get VIP access, like getting the mazes early and things of that nature. Um, you know, another thing that's been that's been really cool is like any type of event that we have on campus that has like a big name attached. As we're covering the soccer game, I've got my news editor Pedro Saravia covering Dolores Huerta speaking here on campus. I mean, you talk about an iconic person in the history of our state um he's covering and getting gonna get to talk to her today and that it's that seems like almost once in a lifetime type stuff right there so we're really special to, or really lucky and we get to get a special events like that um we talked to state treasurer fiona ma on wednesday she was awesome um she gave us gave us time after her q a to talk to us i mean that's that kind of stuff you just it seems like it's like a, it seems like a fairy tale you can get into that kind of access being in junior college writing for a newspaper point at me ryan and i don't know where to go <laughs> no, after no that answer so you caught me unawares daydreaming about my next sip of my energy drink well well <laughs> let's just let's just go one place if you happen to be the live stats right now no the score is not four to nothing mm. you know this is one thing you won't find in the hornet a mistake yeah. so right now <laughs> it's three to one fullerton over irvine valley i just thought i'd throw that in there somebody goes live stats and says Wait a minute, went and saw our crack, our crack people down at the far thing said, hey, guys, I don't know, we must be watching different games. <laughs> uh, there was a penalty kick that was made. <laughs> you know, Mark, it's interesting you mentioned that just a few moments ago. Mistakes. You know, you were talking about going out as students. A lot of people realize, hey, you, you know, you guys are students, and, yes, it may be a tough subject that you guys have to go and uncover and dig up, but you're – doing your job mm -hmm. when you see students who are just joining the Hornet and having to change from that mindset of social media, you know, I'm out with my friends, I'm posting with my friends, etc. But all of a sudden you start with the Hornet mm -hmm. and you realize, okay, I have to take a professional aspect to this. If I'm going to post something, if I'm going to write about something, I've got to take a mindset of, Hey, this is going on the Hornet, which has been around for over a hundred years. How do you coach up? people who are just joining the Hornet who may just be brand new students who have that mindset of, ooh, cool, this is something cool, but don't quite have that mindset of, hey, you know what, this is the professional setting and we are the Hornet. Right. I mean, first and foremost, especially early on in the semester, our big thing is that I sit, make my editors go with the writer, and I've gone with writers as well. Those first, first, you know, first or second story times, because it's nerve-wracking. You go up to interview someone you never met, and they're like a big personality, I know it can get scary, so it's your first time, you know, I, we want you to be comfortable in that nature. Um, and then on top of that, we do a lot of, like, um, I have an editorial board meeting every Monday, and I coach up editors and use, like, leadership skills that I've learned to help bring that out of our writers so they can feel comfortable and know that this isn't just writing an essay for English class. This is being creative. This is forever because it's once it's published on the Hornet, as we've been looking through some old documents from, like, World War One and World War Two. There's stuff on there that's that's there forever. So um, they just have to try to make them as comfortable as possible and realize that we are students, we're learning, but we hold a different standard when we're at the Hornet. 
You mentioned the celebration that's coming up in just a little bit. Can you talk about what the Hornet is doing in preparation for that 100 years? Absolutely, yeah. We're just doing some a uh, little bit of social media posts in the sense of we're doing um, on this day in Hornet history every Monday. Um, you can look for that on FC Hornet on Instagram. For the events themselves, we would love for everyone to come out October 11th. It's a Wednesday from 3 to 5. Out in the main quad, we're going to have some games, some uh, hard copies of a Centennial newspaper, which we haven't had a hard copy in about 10 years, I believe, if I'm uh, correct on that. Um, and that will be out there available as well. And it will be some, uh, just a celebration of this great history and this iconic um, publication that we've had here at Fullerton College. So look forward to that on the quad in a couple weeks, and we'll hope to see you out there, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So you're hearing from Jake Rhodes, the editor-in-chief of the Hornet. We're going to let you go and keep up with those updates as you can once again go ahead and promote that social media where people can find that. Absolutely. Find us at FC Hornet on all social media platforms. And this story will be up tomorrow morning on FCHornetMedia.com. Well, thank you again, Jake. We appreciate thank you me. joining us here on the air. Thanks, Joe. Editor-in-Chief Jake Rhodes of the Hornet here at Fullerton College as they are getting set to celebrate 100 years of the Hornet, not only at Fullerton College, but going out, finding stories, bringing students the opportunity to become journalists in a professional manner, in a professional setting, and breaking news, not only here at Fullerton, but in our community. As we get set for this second half of play, Joseph Pavlenko, Mark Pavlovich joining me here on KBPK. As we get set for the second half, guys, it's interesting to hear from a person who's a student who's covering these teams, Mark. You take a look at a guy like Jake Rhodes who follows these sports programs. You, myself, and Joe have had the opportunity, very similar to Jake, to be out here with a team like Fullerton Football and be able to learn from these people and understand that not only that human aspect, but that friendliness aspect and also the day-to-day -day grind that each of these student athletes go through. Yeah, it's an absolute ball to be out here and involved with Fullerton College Sports at one of the best community colleges in Southern California. I've had a ball for 23 years. And as we get ready for the second half here, Ryan, I'm just going to give a quick update before I get back to you. It's three to one Hornets. If you're on, if you happen to be going to live stats, it says four to nothing. And Ryan, let's just look at that first half as Misael Gonzalez scored the first goal at 343. Follow that up with another goal at 654. Then Neil Sanchez comes in with a goal at 1136. And you look at Hayden Kenny having assists also out there. And that's where we sit as you get ready to call the action here in the second half. Hornets up over Irvine Valley, 3-1 to one here on KBPK. And again, we thank everyone for joining us here on KBPK for Football Fridays. We will continue to be here with Football Fridays for the foreseeable future. We can't wait to bring you a lot more Orange Empire Conference matchups coming up and we start things again next week. Irvine Valley College here in the second half of play will be going from right to left. Fullerton College going from left to right as we begin half number two between both of these two sides. Mark mentioned it just a few moments ago. If you are watching on and keeping up with the live stats, it is a 3-1 matchup. Fullerton with the lead. They got goals in the third, eighth, and 14th minute. Misael Gonzalez with three and eight. And then in the 14th, it was Neil Sanchez with his first career goal. And that made it a 3-0 matchup to that point. And getting things back into it for IVC in the 35th was Ivan Lopez from the penalty marker. And he made it a 3-1 score. Right side touchline, IVC trying to get themselves into an attack. And Grant Miller sees that go off his foot and away. Gets cleared out past the touchline, and it will find itself as a throw-in for IVC. You know, Ryan, the one thing you didn't say enough about Jake is everybody didn't realize the amount of time he puts in to what he does besides having a real life. Yeah, and you mentioned that, Mark. We see him pretty much at every event that you, Joe, and I cover. And plain and simple, we're out there a lot. Yeah. We always see Jay. Yeah, right. I was, I was going to say, if, if you just say it as it is, we're out, we see Jake. We work here, though. 
We put in a 40-hour <laughs> week here at Fullerton College because that's our job. And Jake's out here doing what feels like the exact same thing. Yeah, and he's bringing a lot of content, too. And that's what's interesting that he mentioned in our interview a few moments ago is the fact that he didn't necessarily think of a journalism career until he was brought on in fall of 2022. So if you think about that, that's a year ago. That's not something where, you know, you're putting five, six years into this. Now he's got the responsibilities of the Hornet as the, as the editor-in-chief, and he continually is able to make good decisions for that publication. And now they're celebrating 100 years as a few moments ago getting a yellow card will be Neil Sanchez in the 47th minute. But you look at a guy like Jake who has that work ethic, who is putting in those hours, who is able to kind of grind out as much as possible to get the publication the opportunity to continue to bring out those stories. And it's encouraging, I'll see, I'll say, to see a student like that who goes out and just says, this will get done because it needs to get done. Well, I mean, it reminds me of whenever Mark, Corey, or some of the other instructors come around here and ask you to speak, Ryan, his story during the half reminded me a lot of somebody who talks about they took a sports broadcasting class <laughs> one semester just for the heck of it. That is that is indeed what happened <laughs> as Aldo will chase this out of play. I myself just thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to join the baseball team here at Fullerton College. I'll take a sports broadcasting class for one semester because, you know, college is tough already. Being a college freshman in your first semester, you want to find something that's as fun as possible to keep you on track. And that's exactly what I did in finding a sports broadcasting class, as this one will end up being a foul far side of the park. We'll say about seven yards outside of the box. And personally, going through that sports broadcasting class, enjoyed it so much and said, you know what, this is exactly what I want to do in my future. And you find your passion. You find what you're interested in. You find what you want your future to shape like and look like. And it's something that you'll see with Jake just a few moments ago. Came to Fullerton College, was a student just going through a Journalism 101 class. You think about that. Journalism 101, the basics of journalism, the principles of journalism. And now all of a sudden you're editor-in-chief and you have that journalism career starting to take its form, take its shape. 3-1 score, second half. You see that set piece being set up for. Ivan Lopez is out there. He's going to take it, and he gets that one to go. Beautifully placed in the top right-hand corner, and you see exactly why Ivan Lopez is top three in the Orange Empire Conference in points. He brings IVC to within one. It's now 3-2 Hornets. So, Joe, we talked about the defense for this Hornet team, and now there's just a little trickle going out of the ball right now on the defensive side for this Hornet team. I I wouldn't necessarily say it's on the whole on the Hornet defense though at this point. Both times that the Hornets have been scored on, it's been what you've been talking about basically, Mark. You've been talking about corner kicks, set pieces. Where's that killer leg? Who's going to bend it like Beckham? And IVC is delivering. Mark, ask and you shall receive, apparently. So Ivan Lopez gets the goal. That is five minutes out of the half. So if you're tracking along, that's in the 50th minute of play. And for Lopez, he has a brace in this one. And he's bringing his team back single-handedly. And that's a beautifully placed shot, guys. In the top right-hand corner of the goal and he just places it perfectly inside the frame to bring it to just a one goal advantage for Fullerton College. Again, not wanting to take anything away from Ivan's goal, but the best way to beat Fullerton's defense seems to be take them out of the equation, right? Draw that foul, get that free kick, and then hopefully you'll find the back of the net undeterred. No Nathan Giles on the right-hand side for Fullerton. Diego Duenas is the one who joins them. Here's Hayden Kenny. Kenny trying to find a foot race. He ends up getting fouled, but no call coming. Kenny is told to 
end up picking himself up and he will chase it down along with everyone else for the Hornets and there's a foul on the far side of the field. Yellow card coming out in just a second. We'll see. Aiden Kenny is the one who hit the deck there. And actually, the official is going to the IVC bench to give a warning to one of the goalkeepers. The goalkeeper earlier was Christopher Arzate. He goes up to Arzate and says, hey, that's enough from you. You need to be on the bench. And a yellow card will be issued on the pitch this time for Logan Coffin. That's the second or third booking of the match, I believe, Ryan? That's the fourth. 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 I, was, I was completely off. <laughs> <laughs> so the intensity, the tempo's picking up. Mark, Ryan, do you guys think we're just seeing the beginning of both of these teams coming out, being aggressive, and deciding that, you know what, let, we're going to play that more physical kind of soccer, apparently? I think that's exactly what it is, considering that these are the number one and number two in the state in yellow cards. High physicality. Misa is going to commit a foul, and it will end up being IVC ball in just a few moments. Yeah, and, I, and the game is on now. I mean, it's a one-goal game. You know, Irvine Valley before when it looked like Fullerton might actually run away with this with three quick goals. And then you get the penalty shot for a goal. Then a beautiful play off a corner, and all of a sudden now it's three to two. Attitudes change on the field. Hayden Kenny is actually going to check out for Fullerton. Kenny having a couple of words with a laser as he comes across the park, and he's going to take a seat. Hayden Kenny with an assist today on the Misael Gonzalez in the Misael Gonzalez goal in the eighth minute. And he also gets booked as well. So an interesting day at the park for him. As it gets picked up by Marquez. Marquez to Ruiz. Goes off the shin and out of Ipen. And it will be a throw in for Fullerton. Mark, we mentioned, Joe and I mentioned that uh, Aldo Ramirez had an excellent career when he was in high school. While he was in high school at La Habra, he was a teammate of Angel Seviano. And he himself was actually a nominee for Los Angeles Men's Soccer Player of the Year. That's only 11 nominees across all of LA County. And he was one of those 11 nominees. Here's Misa, Misa with a chance and he sends that wide. Well, I think one of the things you brought up earlier this week, Ryan, you were going back and looking at records, and you were looking at some of the all-time greats here at Fullerton College that played here, and I think you found somebody that was the all-time scorer for Fullerton? As far as we can see in terms of recorded all-time stats for the Fullerton College Hornets, I thought Misael Gonzalez was having a great year because now he's got 11 goals if you include the two from today. And I thought, okay, if you go to the record books, he's got to be close to at least being on pace for a record-setting opportunity. Here's Misa looking for a chance, tries to scissor that one towards the goal and can't get enough of the ball to be able to control it the way that he'd like. But I was looking at the record books thinking, okay, maybe he's close. He's got to be at least next to a pace that would be record-setting. And I found a bunch of guys who had 13 goals, a couple who had 14 in 97, 98, couple from 0102. But then I got to year number 2003. And that's where Christian Roos was here at Fullerton College and led Fullerton College to the state playoffs. So not just the playoffs themselves, not just the SoCal Regionals, not just the first round. We're talking the actual state semifinals. That's the furthest that Fullerton College has gone so far in their program's history. He led them there. He had 36 goals to his resume in 2003. Suffice to say that Misa, while having an excellent season, is not quite on that pace. But yeah, Christian Roos, who Mark, you have familiarity with, is the all-time leader in terms of recorded stats for Fullerton College in goals. Yeah, it was sort of funny. Ryan sort of says the name, and I go, 
wait a minute, I know that guy. Ryan sort of looked at me and I said, that is the head coach for the men's team over at Cypress College. And Ryan, he got his opportunity from being a coach here. And that's another thing to be said about this program. There are more coaches that have gone on from this school because of the head coach that's down on the field right now that has allowed great assistants leave to follow their own destiny as head coaches in community college soccer. It's interesting that you mentioned that, Mark, too, because you see a lot of the teams from or from the Orange Empire Conference having ties to not only Coach Greg Avila's staff, or maybe they played against or coached against Greg Avila's when he was over at your Belinda High School as the women's soccer coach there. And just the impact that Greg Avilas and his staff, and also Kenny Castellanos as well, the impact that they have had in Southern California in terms of soccer is almost immeasurable. If you're looking at opportunity, if you're looking at familiarity across different programs, it's interesting to see how widespread the impact is. Yeah, it really is. And, and you know, it says a lot about a coach when he gives his other coaches an opportunity to grow and to grow the game. Fullerton with a turnover. Now an opportunity sets itself up for Lucas Stark. Stark on the left-hand side. He's looking for a teammate, finds one. He's got that one taken away by Sherman. So Sherman gets back. Misa gets a lot of contact there. Sherman on the run, right-hand side. He's going to continue his transition. Sherman gets that scooped away and it will be sent out of play. Caught up there by Gabriel Velasco. Velasco with an excellent job, Joe and Mark, to get back in time and force for that ball to go out. Yeah, force is a heck of a way to say it. He took his legs out from under him. <laughs> and you would think, coming out of this half, Greg Aviles and his staff thought they would have maybe talked to their players, said, hey, these one-man missions, these runs on the ball, they're not working, guys. We need to, you know, settle. We need to create space. We need to create some openings, pass a little bit more. Greg's the coach. I'm not, obviously, so he's making the decisions best for his team. He might have just looked at his guys and say, this is what you guys do best, so let's drive it home. And we'll see how the pace plays out here for Fullerton as they try and continue their way up with Aldo. Aldo on the off foot. Can't find the person he was looking for. He was trying to go to the right side to Cesar Marquez. Marquez has that go off the foot of Velasco, and it will go out. So throw in coming up as Nathan Giles will re-enter for Fullerton. He takes the place of Sherman. Right side, it's Misa. Misa in the box, goes off his shin, goes off his knee, and it will be a goal kick coming up for IVC. IVC right now, third in the Orange Empire Conference as the goal kick is prepared there by Josh Simonton. Saddleback is right behind IVC sitting, or excuse me, right ahead of IVC sitting in second place. Saddleback 4-1-1 one, one to this point. And 0-0-1 oh, oh, and one in conference. IVC played themselves into the second round of the CCCAA SoCal playoffs last year. They lost El Camino in the second round, 3-0, but they beat Antelope Valley 3-1 in the first round of the playoffs. Julian Svoboda, Leonard Grosno, and Grant Miller were the goal scorers in that one, with Grosno being the game winner in the 30th minute to get them in advancement. Ivan Lopez so far has been the difference for IVC in getting themselves back into this one. They're trying to create once more. Lopez going to have to get a run on the left-hand side. He's going up against Giles. Up into the air, Velasco says, hey, let's slow this down. That ball's going out. No need to worry about it, and it will be a throw-in for the Lasers. And when in doubt for defense, well, you like the basic fundamentals. You always are taught as a player by a coach when in doubt take it up and out not just out but up and out and that's what fullerton did it's 
word from our broadcast partner, Corey Nalen, phoning in, saying, guys, you're doing great. Game sounds great. Looks great. Keep up the good work. Proud of you. Wish I could be out here. Did Gabby Nalen write that? <laughs> There's a lot of kindness in that message. Oh, we uh, caught Corey Nalen on a good day. There we go. Ian Viserys Scott is going to check in. Corey <laughs> Nalen down on the far side. For those of you that don't know, Corey Nalen, our broadcast partner on the other side of football. You'll hear from him tomorrow here on SportsNetUSA.net. Hey, depending on his mood, maybe you'll catch him Wednesdays on women's volleyball at Fullerton College when him and the 145 sports class bring you the action from the Hornet's Nest, or at least it's been the Hornet's Nest all year. Will they go back to Colleen Riley? Will they stay in the Hornet's Nest? Who knows? We're surprised every week, and I guess you guys will be as well. Ball far side. And, Joe, you know, you talk about things that are coming up here on KVPK. While everything's being settled along the touchline on the far side of the park, you mind giving us what's coming up here on KBPK in just a little? Yes, I will. Ball back, high pressure there by Misa. He's just able to get it away, and it will go up to Camarena, and IVC able to finally take over. Irvine Valley trying to play a through ball. It finds its way to Aldo. Aldo gives it away for a moment. It's going to find Grant Miller. Grant Miller, now to the middle. Grant Miller with the chance. Can't swing past two, Aldo can't get to it, and it's going to stay in bounds. Fullerton still with it, and finally they go towards the middle of the park off of Ivan Lopez and out. So there's never a lack of things to talk about going on here at KBPK, Ryan. You've kind of mentioned, I've kind of mentioned, teased, if you will. Next Friday, October 6th, World College Radio Day. KBPK will be participating in that. Plan is have as many guests come across, have as the students talk to as many guests as possible for World College Radio Day. But that's not all. Then the Technology and Engineering Division here at Fullerton College is hosting a manufacturing day on campus. You're interested in some CTE careers and technical uh, fields and engineering and stuff like that? Interested in drafting, architecture, printing tech, any of that kind of stuff. That will be going on here for dra uh, manufacturing day. October 6th as well. They're trying to steal our thunder for World College Radio Day. I don't like it, but we'll play nice. I'll allow it. <laughs> then the 6th because the dance card wasn't full enough already. We've got, once again, Football Wednes Wednesdays, Football Fridays <laughs> here at KBPK. And we'll be out here with the 145 Sports Broadcasting class. Corey Nalen and the class will be out here providing anything we need. Maybe they'll be on the air. Maybe they'll be producing. Maybe they'll be running a camera. Who knows? Going into the next... Wednesday. The next Wednesday we'll be seeing the 145 class doing a volleyball game. I believe it's October 18th if you want me to go that far out, Ryan. And that'll be Fullerton College against Saddleback at home. Again, Corey Nalen, the 145 sports broadcasting class, will be bringing us that game October 18th. I can keep going, Ryan. Stop me when you want. <laughs> No, no, you're all good because that's the thing. We've got a lot of stuff going on on KBPK that everyone wants to stay up to date with. And it's not just, okay, we're promoting the department. We're promoting what KBPK is up to. But it's the opportunity for anyone who's watching or listening at home to say, hey, I've got this stuff going on in the community. And if you can't make it, whether it be for something that's as simple as, hey, you know, you've got work at the time or you've got something else to do, KBPK is out there either covering it, bringing you content, so you can still stay up to date with everything while things are going on. There's a little bit of a, we'll say, stoppage on the field at the current moment. Clock's still running, so it'll be added on later. But all these things that are going on on KBPK will 
allow for everyone to understand what's going on in their community and stay involved. Dia de los Muertos, October 26th, will be out there. That'll be happening at the Fullerton College Quad. KBPK will be out there doing something. I also believe the art department is going to be having a new art gallery opening that day as well. Talking about things the art department's doing, I believe the 1st of October is Love uh, Fullerton Day. Yeah, you uh, are correct. And checking my notes right here. I'm sorry. It's a day in Fullerton. That'll be this Sunday, October 1st. It is off campus, but we'll, we will have students from the Museum Studies program will be working one of the events and one of the artists who will be here for the October 26th opening. That's right. Same night as Dia de los Muertos. Um, we'll be speaking at about their art at the Museum Center, I believe this Sunday, as long as I'm not reading the release they sent us wrong, at 2 p.m. So that's something you can look forward to this weekend. Come on, check out a day in Fullerton. See some of the hard work the Fullerton College Museum study students do. And hear an artist to speak about their work. Ball to the right-hand side. It goes over to Josh Simonton. He'll, he will take over. So just a little taste and an, a full understanding for everyone watching along at home on What's going on not only in the city of Fullerton, but also at Fullerton College and going on with KBPK? You just heard from Joseph Pavlenko. If you want to contact us because you say, hey, you know what? I'm really excited about all those opportunities and all those different things happening at KBPK. Where can I learn more? Well, you can do so by going and following our Instagram page. That is at 90.1 KBPK. And you can also follow along on our YouTube page as well, as that will be a foul in the middle of the park. Misael Gonzalez will end up hitting the deck. Hornet uh, water polo even, I believe, is happening. You are correct. If I'm not mistaken, that starts up next Wednesday, October the 4th, here on KBPK. Plain and simple, you know, we were talking about Jake being everywhere. We will be everywhere coming up in the next few weeks. So a lot going on on KBPK. Stay tuned. And if you are watching along and saying, hey, you know what, guys? I'm here because I'm enjoying, I am enjoying soccer. Well, you can stay here for that, too. Football Fridays will continue next week as Misa takes a shot. And it ends up hitting the post. Fullerton College gets an opportunity. Once again, goes and knocks on the door of IVC saying, hey, guys, we haven't been down this way in a little bit. We're back in the neighborhood. You guys home? <laughs> Three to one. Fullerton, three to two, excuse me, Fullerton. Oh, I sounded like live stats there, didn't I? <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but I thought it, Mark. I wonder if someone has found a soccer ball in the backyard. I've heard footballs have made it across the street. That's true. Hey, you know, you guys are much too loud. Okay. <laughs> I don't want anybody complaining. Why down in the booth over there? Ball in the corner, right-hand side. Brian Aragon is going to approach it. Aragon, liner. Back post, looking for it. It's in the air. IVC takes over. Can't clear. Marquez tries to spin it over to the right, but it goes off the side of his boot, and it will be a goal kick coming up for IVC. Substitution coming in for the Hornets in just a moment. Pedro Delgado is going to run onto the field, and we will see who will take a seat for him, and it looks like it will be Ian Becerra-Scott. Other things on KBP Cakes. You got me started and I can't stop now, <laughs> Ryan. Fridays, Coach's Show comes That's out true. on our YouTube channel. Also available on podcast services around the world. That's right. Almost anywhere you can hear a podcast, you can probably catch the Coach's Show. That is a Mark Pavlovich a.k.a. the OG here at KBPK, Ryan Osborne, and again, the students of KBPK putting that on. We'll have one coming out tonight. It's all about the linebacking core for Fullerton College and how they've performed to this point. In addition to talking to the Fullerton College linebackers and getting a chance to hear from the starters for the Fullerton College football team. Not football team, but football team. The egg ball team. 
Yeah, there you go. Gridiron. Gridiron. They work very hard at what they do. They do indeed. It's one of those high IQ groups at Fullerton College that has given them a lot of success. And the coaches have a lot of raving reviews for those three guys and that entire core as well. Nisa drops this over to his right foot. He's going to dip his way past three. He's got a guy to the right. It's going to find its way to the middle and inside the six-yard marker, it will end up looking like a throw-in for Fullerton College. And again, you watch the defense from Irvine, and this is what I enjoy in watching the game when basic fundamentals are taught in the game of soccer. And I know as simple as it sounds and as silly as it sounds, ball comes in, hey, don't know what to do with it. I'm going to take it out. If I can take it up, I will. But I'm going to take it out and make Fullerton start all over again. That's the interesting thing of a chess game in soccer. What a throw in, Ryan Osborne. <laughs> that ball went at least 25, maybe 30 yards off of a throw in and right down towards the penalty marker. Zyvan Lopez is going to try and find some offense. Final 16 of play between both of these two sides if nothing happens as that is a foul that is asked for by IVC. Nothing is called and it will be popped back over towards the middle of the park. There's a foul that goes against the Lasers and Fullerton College will take over. You know, that was an easy little knock, uh, you know, to stop play right there too. If I was the official, I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, you know, every once in a while you get those little knocks and, you know, hey, play should go on. I mean, you can be one of two opinions about that, right, Mark? If you let it go too much, then at a certain point in the game, like Ryan and I mentioned a year ago in postseason play with Fullerton versus Kuimaka, um, then you're the referee trying to wrestle control of the match back from the players sometimes. Because if you let them indulge in that physical play a little bit too much, sometimes the players get carried away. And then there you are as the ref. You let it go the first half. You realize it's getting out of hand, and it's even more out of hand in the second half. And you kind of have to assert your uh, your position and your authority on the field to make sure everybody stays safe at the end of the day. Foul far side of the field. It will be a set piece coming up for IVC where everything has been particularly dangerous. Ivan Lopez is going to step to this one. Couple subs come in for Irvine Valley College. Coming back in is Jacob Edwards. And a set piece coming up. You see the new goalkeeper for Fullerton College who entered just a few moments ago, Mario Floriano, directing traffic. Lopez up into the box. There's a chance for Floriano to grab it. He will do so. He'll hit the deck and he will allow for everyone to move up with exactly 15 minutes to play in this one. Feels like what we just saw in the other half of the field. Somebody had an opportunity right into the hands of the goalkeeper. They took the shot. Can't fault them for that. They get another shot on goal. But keeper had it under control. Floriano, if you end up getting an opportunity to come and watch a Fullerton College football match in person. You'll hear Floriano's voice a lot. He's one of those guys who is very communicative with his back line and not just in your typical style of let's make sure the spacing is happening and let's make sure we have the correct pace moving up, but he is very talkative to his back line and he sets that pace for Fullerton in terms of everyone talking and getting a chance to not just communicate on the pitch, but also it it's almost like they're having conversations out there at times. As that's going to be a foul going against Fullerton, that gets charged to Diego Duenas from about 40 yards out. And I love watching the coaches wring their hands when you get these calls where it's, it's really not much. They let them play on when people are running over each other. Then it's a little twist. A guy goes down, and at this stage... With 13.40 to go, Ryan, this is really where you want the referee to eat their whistle. Well, and Ryan and I mentioned it kind of last game. Um, and I'll get your take on it, Mark, since you're out here with us today. The the goalie, I feel like, the difference between that separates good goalies, good keepers from excellent keepers, I'd say, is they act like the closest thing on the field, the closest uh, thing to a quarterback on a football field, on this sort of football field. They're out there calling the plays. 
Yeah, I, you know, Joe, I think that's a great call on your part because people just don't understand how important the goalie is, not just for being in the goal, but for actually conducting what's going on in the field. That was an excellent observation by you. Card is going to come out here in just a moment. That gets shown. I believe that's going to go to Jacob Peraza. Actually, excuse me, that goes to Fred Bekovich. So Bekovich gets his first booking with only 12 and a half left to play in this one. Must be a Croatian because Serbians, we play clean. <laughs> then he could be a Czech. You know, Corey Nalen's still watching. He'll he'll chime in here because we know the Czechoslovakian team has an excellent soccer team. Did Mark say Czechoslovakian? I believe he did. Yeah. Czech Republic. There's the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Now I've heard I've heard the Czech and the Slovakia put together. Here's Misa. Takes a shot, goes off the wall, floats off to the right side, a chance, and taking a spill will be Simonton. Didn't end up getting contacted, but was looking for the opportunity for the whistle to blow. Well, both of you guys have heard of Czechoslovakia, but they're Slovaks. Consider considering that Czechoslovakia was <laughs> separated in, I believe, 1992. During, after the fall of the USSR, it became the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Those are two different things. I'm just saying I've heard of it, man. <laughs> They're <Bri> Czechoslovakians. <laughs> Brian Osborne here with your geography lesson <laughs> for <laughs> the day. It's not like Serbs and Croatians, okay? There's it's, difference. There's a hint of similarity there, Mark. Left-hand side, Giles off his head, almost an opportunity for Chase Cuevas to step into it. Now Lopez, Lopez left-footed once again, ends up seeing that ball go away from him. I now know what the conversation is going to be tomorrow when we On drive to home? Southwestern. <laughs> Western? <laughs> Southwestern tomorrow. It's going to be Corey in the front seat saying one thing, Ryan in the back seat saying something else, me saying something else, and the one person who grew up there not saying a thing, Gabby Nalen. I thought you were going to say she's going to say you're all wrong. She'll say that in check. Which is next to Torrance. Fullerton almost an opportunity to get that one in front off of a turnover. Spun towards that left-hand side. All the way back for Floriano. Popped up. 25 yards outside the box, and it will end up going off the foot of an IVC player, but boots are up, and a foul is called. <laughs> 3-2 is our score. Fullerton College with the lead. Goals in the third, 8, and 14th. On the other side for IVC, they've got goals in the 35th, and the 50th to make it 3-2. Out of play it goes. Throw in coming up for Irvine Valley College. You see Floriano directing traffic there. Calling for everyone to move around as this will be a great chance for Irvine Valley off of the hands of Ivan Lopez to get this into the box if they can do so successfully. Now it's swung towards the middle. A chance there, and it goes off the head of it. Look like Giles, and it will go out of play. A corner kick coming up as Ivan Lopez is going to go over and retrieve it. Everyone moving up for Irvine Valley with the exception of Gabriel Velasco. 
in addition to Isaiah Ponce. That's the middle of the box. This is floated up. Now towards Floriano, it's going to be a foul against IVC. And it looks like Fullerton might have some players that are, look like they're kind of warming up, shaking it out, look like they're getting ready to maybe check in. One of them being Sherman, it looks like, as Fullerton has relied on Sherman in the past to make sure that that back line continues to have fresh legs. And the two guys that go up to the substitution area for Fullerton College will be Alexis Tamayo, who has had some minutes earlier on in this one, and, that and then Ricardo Michelle. It looks like a Fullerton player. I couldn't catch his number, was having some words with the ref about the exchange that ended with Fullerton's keeper being down on the ground. And it's enough for a substitution for Fullerton College as coming back into this match will be Ryan Marino Rojas. So Marino Rojas will take over for Floriano. Marino Rojas in his third straight match that he has played, played a full 45 earlier, only giving up the one goal off the, off the penalty kick. Right side, now to Lopez. Lopez watches that one get skied away, and it's going to go off the fence on the far side of the park. Lopez on the quick retrieve. Still on the far side. Neither team really able to get the control that they would like, but IVC is trying to tie this one up. Yeah, IVC, their forwards look highly motivated. They know time's ticking down. We've got six minutes and change left on the official clock. Stoppage time not included. And just a few moments ago, you see that ball just go past the right post. As three subs will come in for Fullerton. We mentioned Tamayo, we mentioned Michelle. And also coming in will be Ruben Rivera. You know, so, guys, when I do the women's game, it, they do it where the clock goes up. It doesn't go down. So when we hit the 43-minute mark, the clock stops, and then we all have to guess <laughs> how long the game is going to play on. Well, that's how you keep it interesting. Oh, yeah. Saw a great game between Saddleback and Cypress for the women last week, and that game itself took number five against number one, Saddleback number one in the nation for women, Cypress number five in the nation for women. That ended up in a 2-2 tie at Fred Haas Field on the campus. I did not catch what just happened, but Lorena looked highly motivated. Yeah, on that far side of the field, it was Fullerton College in a chase there, and it looked like IVC had the foul call, or it looked initially like it was a foul call. Turns out it was just a throw-in on the far side of the park. Irvine Valley's bench was not happy that it stayed as a throw-in for Fullerton. And jumping off the bench to yell at the official ended up being Christopher Arzate, our goalkeeper from earlier. And Arzate ends up getting carded because he came off the bench onto the field to yell at the official. This one goes down towards the middle. Hayden Kenny comes in just a few moments ago. That's going to be a yellow card for Kenny. And see, this and is if I'm not mistaken, that's a red for him. Hayden Kenny just stepped onto the field just a few moments ago. Not, what, 45 seconds ago. And now it's a red card for him. And Fullerton will be playing with 10 for the rest of this matchup. He is not happy with himself. You see him walking off the field, realizing he got a little aggressive. But again, you just had somebody go down on the opposite side of the field. Something has gone on. It's like we were talking to Mark. At a certain point, the official on the field needs to wrestle control of the match back. And it looks like he's doing that. He's getting a little more liberal with the cards because just calling fouls and giving a possession swap isn't enough to motivate these players because both these teams are highly motivated and they both want to finish the game in their favor. And it's tough there for Kenny because the reason why he ends up getting the yellow card 
is for time wasting. That ball ends up near him, and after it gets called as a foul and gets given back to IVC, he kicks the ball into the right corner past the corner and past the end line, and so he gets carded for the time waste, which is why you see him so affected by it, because he knows that it's just that quick little lapse in judgment that forces him to get another card. Here's Ivan Lopez, middle of the park. A shot right side of the post goes up and wide. It was there for Jacob Edwards, and Edwards sees that fly past the right post and wide. And actually, Ryan, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Unless I'm missing one, is that nine Hornets on the field? Because we have one being tended to on the opposite side of the field. I believe Hayden Kenny came in as the injury substitution. We do have 10. Okay. I can't count. Probably because <laughs> I didn't go to uh, Long Beach. <laughs> oh, man. I said it's because I yeah, didn't go to Long Beach. Yeah, that's a compliment. You're supposed to say, because, you know, you, you thought you were going to go to Cal State Fullerton. Let's just, I, I, I'm surprised Ryan Osborne got that right. <laughs> uh, Seviano hits the deck, 146 on the clock. It will be interesting to see what the official ruling is on hit here. Because normally you get to 45, you get an additional oh, 30 seconds or so to play on afterwards. But considering that we had stoppage after the Irvine Valley goal, we had injury stoppage on the far side of the park due to Pedro Delgado and the collision as well. And then we had that stoppage at the near side earlier. How much time is going to be on the clock? You know, from a game that started off pretty quick into Fullerton's favor, I mentioned, you know, Fullerton national ranking fifth, IVC's 15th, with the gap apparently that in national rankings at least that these teams had, I thought once Fullerton was up by two, it was pretty much, you know, a park the bus, closed book situation. And to see this game in the final minutes of it turn into this nail biter, I was not expecting that with the early minutes of the match going the way that they did. And Boy. Ryan, we have another player down. Yeah, and that's going to be Mason Gorham on the near side of the park. He's going to be subbed out instantaneously for Kyle Sherman. So Gorham Gets a quick cup of coffee, and then he ends up getting taken out because of injury. He's going to stretch out on the right side of the park, and IVC will take over once again. 146 showing on the clock. As this will be dropped down and kicked away by Simonton. I'm going to say five minutes to stoppage time. I'll give you, you know what, I'll say about four in total. Clock is stopped at 146, so just like you were talking about, Mark, you get that two-minute stoppage, and then after that, you kind of guess and see what the extra time is going to be delivered as. Damayo gets a handball called against him. He's going to walk this all the way down towards his bench, try and get as much time off the clock as possible. Four minutes. Four minutes. So four minutes from now. Referee just told it up. Either, either four or five, Ryan. I thought he said four. I heard four as well. Ball in towards the middle. A chance, and it goes just wide. It will be a goal kick coming up. Fullerton College trying to let that ball go all the way into the parking lot to get a little bit more time on their side. But the official says, hey, you know what? There's a ball that's directly behind the frame as a substitution is coming in. As Francesco Centrella will enter for Fullerton. And taking a seat now will be Ruben Rivera. Yeah, and I think that was Michael Garcia back there arms out saying, guys, stay away. Let's let's let this ball roll a little <laughs> bit like you were saying, Ryan. Ball out. Seviano watching it. Stays with Fullerton. Tossed away. Aldo Ramirez is going to get that ball placed into his stomach 
by one of the reserves for Irvine Valley College. Although just to the left of your screen, he's going to throw it in. Hop, skip, and a jump, and he finds Misael Gonzalez. Gonzalez fighting for it. Stays with Fullerton College. Gonzalez wants to play fast. Gonzalez looking for Sherman. Sherman on the left-hand side. He gets pushed into the ball, and it will be heavy contact that ends up in favor of Irvine Valley College. A goal kick coming up, and we're going to say approximately two minutes gone in the four-minute stoppage time. Wait, I could have sworn someone here on the broadcast said four minutes of stoppage time. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Ball to the right-hand side. Lasers trying to get back on the board. It's a 3-2 matchup. They've got two straight goals and trying to push for one more. Just before this one closes out, a little bump back. A chance there for Lopez, and he's just a shade behind the ball. That was a beautiful setup on the bump back by Grant Miller, and it will be a kick coming up here. little dropper there from... Marino Rojas, and he finds Misael Gonzalez. Gonzalez able to get past one. He's looking to get past the second triple team there and gets dispossessed. Aldo called for a foul. Fullerton College trying to hang on here. Three minutes gone in stoppage time. So just about one minute to play in this one as Irvine Valley is trying to get themselves back into this. In the early going, it looked like it was going to be all Fullerton. Booted over towards the left-hand side, into the box, is clanging around. Here's a chance, a shot, it's in! It's in! Irvine Valley has tied it up in extra time! The Irvine Valley Lasers with Grant Miller getting that one to the left post. It is a tied matchup at three apiece. And Fullerton College, after going up 3-0 in the first 15 minutes of play, have watched the Irvine Valley Lasers come all the way back and have drawn up this match with less than a minute to play. And if you're not familiar with soccer... Less than a minute on stoppage time, potentially. Right, Ryan? But yeah. what could happen is if IVC is on the attack, has the advantage. Same with Fullerton. If they're on the attack, has the advantage. Those 60 seconds might come and go, but the ref has the option to let the play on the field finish. If they have advantage, it's all on the ref's temperament, basically. Right, Ryan? Temperament, you can let it discretion, play it out. yeah. Yep. As that one gets deflected away, Fullerton is trying to play with something here so they can get one more chance before the stoppage time has ended. Looks like the ref's dangerously close to calling it, so it's in Fullerton's benefit. Again, look like they have the advantage. The way that this is going to go is it's going to be a throw-in, which will most likely be the final play of this matchup. It's going to go towards the right side just a little bit more. So if, the, if this was in football, you want it out of bounds, right? Same with soccer. If you're IVC, you get your foot on this, you want to send this out of bounds as quick as possible. And that's the way that you do it, is you get it into the awaiting arms of your goalkeeper and Josh Simonton, and he's able to take control. The official has the whistle in his mouth, and that will do it. If you are an IVC Laser fan, you are thrilled with this matchup as both of these two teams are drawing at midfield and they're going to kind of come together here in the middle of the park. Seviano wants a card as IVC and Fullerton trying to separate things. Tamayo is talking with the other side. Seviano is telling everyone to go and separate. And both of these two teams in an, Irv or an Orange Empire Conference matchup the tempers fly because both of these two squads, fantastic play in their own right, in their own time. But if you're a Fullerton College fan, guys, this feels like a loss. Well, yeah. I, I, Joe, I'm going to jump her real quick. The difference in this game is Ryan Osborne, this came out as a fast, speedy, offensive team that pressed all the time. What happened is that game changed. 
just before the end of the first half. And there was not that running the defenders up over midfield. Never once did I see in the second half a defender from Fullerton over midfield. And the offensive prowess changed as we have coaches talking to each other too. It's not just players. It's coaches right now mouthing off. Yeah, Ivan Lopez was talking to Coach Kenny Castellanos at midfield. And both everyone from every side is starting to talk to one another and of course, you know you know that the tempers flare just a little bit because it is an Orange Empire Conference matchup and because these two teams have so much familiarity with one another. But just to quickly recap in this one, it started off with an excellent chance to start for Fullerton College with a three-minute goal and an eighth-minute goal. Misael Gonzalez got on the board twice in the first 10 minutes of play, and Fullerton College got themselves on the board and off and running. In the 14th minute, Neil Sanchez got his first career collegiate goal, and he gave them a 3-0 lead. Now, it looked like it was going to be all Fullerton going into the half, and then at 35 minutes, a foul inside the box brought a penalty kick that was given to Ivan Lopez, who was the leading scorer for Irvine Valley College, and he was able to bury it. Coming out of the half off of a beautiful set piece, Ivan Lopez makes it 3-2 in the 50th off the free kick. And finally, in stoppage time, we'll say 90 plus 4, Irvine Valley College ends up drawing this match at three apiece in the final moments of this game. And it ends up being a 3-3 draw between Fullerton and Irvine Valley. Fullerton actually is still winless against Irvine Valley in their last four matches here at home, spanning across to 2019. So that's going to wrap up our Football Friday for this afternoon. Joe, very quickly, want to give you the opportunity to promo what's coming up this upcoming week for KBPK. So once again, I'll say it. Uh, October 6th, World College Radio Day on KBPK. KBPK will also be out and around at Fullerton College for Manufacturing Day. Who knows, maybe we'll have the Dean of the Technology and Engineering Department on KBPK for World Manufacturing Day. Have some synergy in the department. What the heck? Why not? <laughs> Talk about tech and engineering on World College Radio Day, on Manufacturing Day. <sighs> Doing all the things, Ryan. Then we have Dia de los Muertos. That is at the end of October, which is basically we're knocking on the door of. That's happening this weekend. It's going to be here before you know it. Volleyball Wednesdays with the women's volleyball team at Fullerton College. Home games you can catch on KBPK with the 145 Sports Broadcasting class. Football Fridays continue. And then you have Gridiron with Ryan Osborne, Mark Pavlovich, and Corey Nalen over on SportsnetUSA.net. I think that's about it. I think I'm going to hop off the promo pony. All right, so go ahead, stay tuned with KBPK. You see our socials there as we're going to end up finishing off this version of Football Fridays. For Joseph Pavlenko and Mark Pavlovich, I am Ryan Osborne thanking you for joining us. Our final score in a thrilling Orange Empire Conference matchup, a 3-3 draw between Fullerton College and Irvine Valley. You have been watching Football Fridays and Fullerton College Soccer here on KBPK.